Syarikat Berasku was established in 1982 during retail activities as a core business. In 1992, Syarikat Berasku being officially incorporated under Syarikat Berasku sendiri yang berhad and went into venture capital with Padi Beras National Bernas in 1997. Berasku sendiri yang berhad wants to produce both rice and yellow noodle in the long run. However, we could not produce both product because we have limited capital, which is we cannot afford to provide enough machinery, tools and equipment for both productions. Other than that, we also does not have enough men working because we are not capable to pay their salaries due to increases in minimum wage salary from 1100 ringgit to 1500 ringgit that had been announced by government on May 2022 Berasku sendiri yang berhad has decided to produce rice over yellow noodle since our company's labor machinery tools and equipment are very limited we plan to focus on rice production for the time being Owing to a limited labor and capital, Berasku sendiri yang berhad use this idea to continue produce the key products. Our business has already decided to manufacture rice instead of yellow noodle. Our company has decided to focus more on producing rice because rice have higher demand in market because of rice is a staple food for Malaysians. There is no denying that rice is the heartland of this country. Aside from the multitudes of paddy fields across the nation, rice also gives a lot of benefits to the consumers, such as improves their nervous system health because of rice is an amazing source of a variety of B vitamins. So due to a limited capital and labor, our company decided to focus on our main product which is rice instead of yellow noodle. The way we used to produce our rice products is by using human and machine capability. By using them, the work will be easier, safer and we can produce more rice. Our company used a lot of high-tech machines such as modern power boiling innovation, high-performance rice cooler and optical sorting machine to improve our rice quality and increase our rate of production. Our company decided to produce 3,700 bags of rice per month. Our product is suitable for all ages, whether young ages or old ages. This is because our product which is rice in general is easy to digest and it has less saturated fats and also has good cholesterol as compared to the other food. Other than that, our product also suitable for all races in Malaysia such as Malays, Chinese and Indians. For the law of demand, we have two determinants of demands which known as price factor and non price factor. For the price factor, we have two movement of demand curve will occur which are movement upward and movement downward. For the movement upward, Malaysia once again has entered the monsoon season. The season usually cause flood disaster especially on east coast area. As people cannot go out as the road has been closed by flood, the demand of the rice has start to increase. Hence, the price for our product has to be increased from the RM35 to RM37 per bag. Following by the increasing price, The demand quantity shall decrease from the 3,500 to 3,300 per month. For the mo- for the movement downward, due to the reason Malaysia begin to think to start a healthy lifestyle, they start to take brown rice instead of white rice. As now they know that the white rice has high glycemic index, meaning that it can cause spike in blood sugar. Because of that, the price for our product tend to decrease by 35. 37 ringgit to 35 ringgit per bag. Hence, the demand quantity for our rice increased from 3,300 to 3,500 per month. So that means there will be a downward movement along the demand curve. For the non-price factor, we have taste and preference. As the white rice has been a staple good for Malaysian, there are still people who enjoy other type of rice such as brown rice. The consumer who really care about their health condition and will prefer to buy brown rice instead of the white rice as they know they have less sugar yet also have the same value of carbohydrates. But some people also tend to buy white rice as it low in fat and fiber and easy to stomach for digesting. The white rice is also much cheaper and reasonable than brown rice. Hence, the demand will increase from 3,300 to 3,500 per month will cause an outward shift in the demand curve. 
For the second of non price factor, we have price of related goods. Other than white rice, carbohydrates products such as noodle and bread are also one of the consumer choice to choose between. Combined with the subsidies price that has been imposed by the government, the demand for our price product has decreased from 3,500 to 3,000 baht per month. As a result, the demand curve undergoes inward shifting. For the law of supply, there are also have the terminal of supply, which is known as price factor and non price factor. For the price factor, they still have two types of movement, which is known as movement upward and movement downward. For the movement upward, due to the bad, unpredictable weather during this monsoon season, Malaysians start to see up food stock as a preparation. Since the rice is staple good for people, they are willing to pay rice for the high amount just to get what they need. So our company need to supply more bag of rice to fulfill customer demands. Hence, our company has increased in supply from 3,500 to 3,700 per month. Therefore, the price of for our product increased from 35 ringgit to 37 ringgit per bag. In conclusion, our supply for rice has made the upward movement along the supply curve. For the movement downward. As our product has too many competitors such as brown rice, noodle and bread, are also give almost the same benefit to consumer. Also, the government has subsidized our product by putting the ceiling price for certain kilograms. The market, the market for our product has declined and affecting the price sale. Therefore, our supply has been reduced from 3,700 to 3,500 per month. Hence, the price for the product also declining parallelly as the supply production from 37 ringgit to 35 ringgit per bag. A downward movement along with the supply curve is also occur. For the non price factor, we have two types of factors that happen to our product. One of them is level of technology. Following the 4.0 industry revolution, most of our product use high tech machine to pack our rice bed by bed. They are also required a lot of cost to keep maintenance and repair the machine if the malfunction happen. It also has reduced the cost of production, considering that our product supply should greatly increase yet the price for the product also tends to increase. Hence, our product will have high number of supply and will cost the shifting outward to the supply curve. As for our second factor of the non price factor, we have government or economic policy. As our product has been controlled by the government, we cannot get away from the government policies and that consist of taxation and subsidies. When our product is being taxed, this will increase the cost of production and will reduce the amount of profit earned. This will lead our product to decrease in supply, hence our product will be shifting inward to the supply curve. Price Elasticity of Demand in Barasco Sidgam Berhad, we define ED as the responsiveness of the chain in quantity demand of a packet of rice due to the chain in price of packet of rice. Next, our product has an elastic demand that the buyer is very responsive with the chain in price. It is shown by the diagram when the price of the rice increased from RM 30, 30, 33 ringgit to 35 ringgit. The quantity demand will decrease from 3,700 bags to 3,500 bags. Determinant of price electricity of demand. First, existence of substitute. The availability of substitute good will definitely affect the demand elasticity. This is because price has a lot of substitute in the market. Therefore. If we increase the price of our rice, consumer will prefer to buy other rice that cost them a cheaper price in the market such as Shah Rambutan, Faiza Umas and Jasmine. Hence, it will cause the price elasticity demand to be elastic. Second, time frame. Rice production may vary a little depending on the growing condition, especially water availability and solar radiation. Normally, median duration 120 to 140 days and long duration 160 days plus. Most variety take 60 to 65 days from funicular inundation to harvest. Therefore, our product need at least a month to produce. Hence, 
it will cause the price elasticity demand to be elastic. Price elasticity of supply Price elasticity of supply can be defined as the responsiveness of the chain in quantity supply of packet of price due to the chain in price of packet of price and also known as a ES. Once the price of price rise, Beras Kusir and Bihar decide to produce more rice for our customer to gain more profit. Our company will be more responsive due to the chain in price and we result in elastic supply curve. The diagram show that when there is in slight increase the in price from RM33 ringgit to RM35 ringgit, there will be a chain in quantity supply from 3300 to 3500 bag. Determinant of price elasticity of supply. Level of technology. Technology development that rise that day by day will result in faster production. Therefore, our company use the latest technology such as the aerobic rice growing system that can avoid direct drilling the rice into the ground instead of keeping the crop founded for a long period of time. It is flushed regularly with water. Hence, with the higher the technology level, the more price elasticity the quantity supply will be. Our company Berasku Sedang Bahad need to maintain our business. So to maintain that, we sell our product at market equilibrium price. So, as you know, equilibrium price and quantity can be reached when the demand curve intersect with the supply curve. In this diagram, the equilibrium price is RM35 per 10 kg and the equilibrium quantity is 3500 per packet. This is a point when the market equilibrium is decided and there will be no change in quantity and the price. As you know, price change will not occur in the market equilibrium. We can see in the station where the buyers and the suppliers are pumped to buy the rice in equilibrium. In this diagram, we can see that the demand curve intersects with the supply curve. It shows that the intersection which the market equilibrium occur. Our company had a meeting with our shareholders. Some of them suggest that we can gain more profit by increasing our products by RM35 per 10 kg and RM38 per 10 kg. After we try the new price, the quantity supply exceeds the demand curve. With that case, our company faces a surplus. As you know, our product is known as People's Choice with an affordable price make it always run out of stock in the market. As you know, our company sells our product for about RM33 per 10 kg. Meanwhile, the others brand sell them for RM36 to RM38 range. By that, our products attract people with lower income or high income to purchase our products with low price. Although, we cannot keep up with this idea because our company gains less profit. This case happens when the quantity demand is higher than the quantity supply. Thus, the shortage happen. Due to price equilibrium of price being too high which was RM35 per 10 kg during the flood season, the government imposed a new price that is known as a price ceiling at RM33 per 10 kg. The government want to make sure that the lower income people can also afford to buy the rice. We know that most of the lower income people had their house destroyed by the flood. Therefore, RM33 is the maximum price that we can sell. As you know, the price ceiling will cause a shortage. It shows when the quantity demands exceeds the quantity supply, which is RM3700 packet, is more than quantity supply, which is RM3300 packet. From the diagram, we can see that we are short on 400 packet of rice. Our company has decided to produce more rice due to flood season that we keep be that keep becoming worse and worse. 
Moreover, we're also aiming to come up with the new rice that is brown rice. As we know that the brown rice is more healthier than the white rice. We are targeting this audience that want to stay fit and want to reduce their weight as well. By doing this, we hope to see an increase in our rice demands and supply upcoming and hope for our customer to be satisfied with our quality of rice. Thank you.